Hello, hello world. My name is Ashley Collins. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The Breakup Diaries. Let's talk about moving back in with your parents, shall we? It's shitty, isn't it? Okay, that was... That wasn't very nice. That wasn't very sweet and kind of me, especially right now during the pandemic where some of us were forced to move back in with our parents because we lost our jobs. And every household is situational. Every household is a snowflake. <laughs> That's something that we say at work as a part of our script. But um, let me give you some context for why I had to move back in home. <laughs> uh, I just got a little nervous. No, we're going to keep doing it. <laughs> let me give you... Some background for why I had to move back at home with my mother. So, um, <laughs> this is so funny. This because this is something that I mentioned to my ex. I I was at a job interview once, and you know how like you're sitting in the lobby waiting, and I don't like to bring my cell phone in when I'm going to an, an in-person interview because I feel like it's kind of like uh, it's a little bit unprofessional. So what I do um instead is um is I write. You know, like I take notes of my observations and stuff like that. <laughs> So um, I was writing a letter to my ex. I would do that a lot. I would write him letters, um, even though he hated my handwriting. But um, I was writing him a letter and I was like, you know what's different about me? I never felt that urge, that urgency to go back home. Like when I went off to college, I was so excited i only called home crying once because i got a really bad grade in class but in like in my defense it was a creative design class and i suck at drawing this is not self-defeating at all talk at all i'm really really a shitty drawer and so i kept getting bad grades and i'm like i don't know what to do to do better you know to be better because it's like i needed this to pass this class in order to stay a theater major anyway but um when i went off to college i was so excited to finally leave the nest i was so hype and actually I and I also lived on on campus in dorms and I dreaded holidays because I did not want to go home <laughs> it sounds really really bad right but um so then when I graduated from college I moved back in home with my with my mom and for three days I was I was a little depressed whatever but like on that third day I woke up and I was just applying to jobs applying for jobs applying to jobs not even the city <laughs> I was ready to leave the nest again. And um, so, I, yeah, after three months, I found a job. And then um, I did a little bit of traveling for like uh, for like a year. And then I eventually moved back in home with my mom. And I lived at home with my mom for three years. But literally those three years, it's like a blur. I don't really remember being productive. I don't really remember being useful. All I know is, <laughs> I was like, I need to get the fuck out of this house one day. Um, <laughs> um, and so yeah, so 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 I moved into into another city, and I was living on my own for five years. Um, it it was a struggle. Please believe it was a <laughs> it was a huge struggle. But eventually, like I I found my own space, and I was I was happy, and I was proud of that. I was able to finally pay bills. You know, I was, I was able to finally like I didn't have a huge savings. Like I didn't have like thousands of dollars, but like <laughs> but I was finally able to like have a little bit of savings money left over after I paid my bills, and then um. And then I met my most recent ex, and um, we moved in together. And then he and my he and I moved to another city. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna say don't ever follow someone that you're dating, but you know every relationship is a snowflake. <laughs> I just have a habit of moving with guys whenever I meet them. Um, but but yeah, he and I moved to a new city, and then um. One day, um, the pandemic started, and he was like, do you think that your your mom would take us in? And I was like, yes, of course. Of course she'll take us in. You know, like, I love you, and we're together, but I guess I didn't say that out loud. Um, so, yeah. So, we moved into my mom's house, he and I, and then things just felt a little off. They felt a little weird. Like I was introducing him to everyone, everyone in my family, because I was so ex I was so excited for them to meet him. But I was introducing him as my boyfriend, and basically, long story short, he just didn't want that title. So one morning, I was like, "Hey, are we together?" And like he gave like literally this like five minute long speech about why we're not together, why he doesn't want to pursue a relationship with me, why he just wants to stay friends. And I was like, okay, cool. So why did you move with me into my mom's house? Cause that's a little weird, don't you think? 
that don't you think the sending sending like a little mixed signals because to me in my brain i mean my fault because i assumed but like me in my brain like i'm thinking where us moving with my parents is like taking our relationship to the next level you know i'm mean, like i said i'm introducing you to everyone as my boyfriend the love of my life and it's like we're on two separate pages so um yeah here i am <laughs> he left and i'm here and i'm miserable <laughs> um and something that is very important to me is mental sanity. I'm not even going to say mental health, but mental, mental sanity, um, mental wellness, and an environment. And I think people don't have enough empathy for kids <laughs> when we say that being at home is miserable. Because I think some people are like, oh man, I, I wish when I was your age, I had the opportunity to go home and save some money. And yeah, and that's not necessarily true for my household. <laughs> my household is, is, a, is a bit toxic. And yeah, there, there are reasons why I go for long walks at night. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, anyway. So huh, what's it like living back at home with your parents? Hmm. For me, in my situation, it's very tough. Like I said, it's mentally mentally draining. I have no privacy whatsoever, in which I'm sure some parents are looking at this and they're like, well, it's my house. I can do whatever I want. You know, and it's it's so different for someone who's who's been on their own for five years to come and be like smothered. And so I, okay, I'm going to go to my notes now. Okay, so did you know that a couple of years ago, 15% of millennials were living at home with their parents. Right now, that is 33% of millennials are moving back in with their living at home with their parents. And I know what you're thinking. We were set up for a disaster. We were told to go to college. We were told to take on these loans. We were told to, to get credit card debt, you know? And now we are literally drowning in debt and we can't afford our own place. We can't even afford a car loan, you know? And so my advice to you would be, what exactly are you looking for are you looking for that nice condo on the beach are you willing to live below your means in order to get out of that comfort zone because i think for a lot for a lot of people that living in their parents houses is way too much of a comfort zone if it was up to my mom let me tell you my mom's a very sweet lady she's very very sweet but she's she's very special where um <laughs> she she coddles the heck out of us. I remember when my older brother got away from college, he lived here for a couple of years, several years actually, until my family was like, hey, bro, you gotta go. You can't, <laughs> you can't live. But like, it, it's always been my outside family saying to us, you can't live at your mom's house forever. I was never like that though. I was like, no, it's okay. I get you. I want to get out. <laughs> and then my little brother, um, yeah, like, they were like, you have to get out the house, too. Uh, <laughs> but my mom is the kind of person where it's like she wants her kids to stay in the house forever. <laughs> if it was up to my mom, I, would, I wouldn't I would even be looking at other apartments. I would just be living in the house. And, and when she passes, I, I keep the house, you know. <laughs> and it's sweet. It's kind. But it's not it's not healthy. Um, there's a lot of helicopter parenting going on where you send you send your kid off into the world and then when they come back you don't want them to leave you know because okay I feel like I'm right now I'm doing a lot of bashing of baby boomer, boomers let me take a step back and come up from a place of empathy I mean it's it goes without saying but we grew up in extremely different times right <laughs> things are very very different our parents didn't have the internet like this our parents the the job the job market was extremely different for our parents so it was easier for them to get a house it was easier for them to get a relationship get married etc etc and i'm using easy loosely don't be offended <laughs> and whereas now things are very complicated and it's very hard for them to understand our world so when we are looking at these baby boomers, let's come from a place of empathy that they do not understand. They do not comprehend. Okay. And it's like, oh, I saw this one quote the other day where it said, I can explain it to you, but I can't make you understand it. You see what I'm saying? Okay, cool, cool. So what's, like I said, I feel like, especially in my household, there is smothering to the point of codependency. What is codependency? Because I feel like I'm using that word a lot. Forgive me. Code oh, sorry, I'm trying not to touch my face. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> codependency is basically 
the only way I can think of it is like a metaphor where it's like you're you are so attached to them like like a sticking like like you're sticking to them you're stuck to them and it's like you don't know how to be your own individual you are just a part of them okay um what else what else what else um, this is a phrase that I use, a, a, a term that I use commonly with from Jordan Peterson, where I think a lot of millennials are suffering from Peter Pan syndrome. <laughs> what is that? Peter Pan syndrome is like where you do not want to grow up. You are so stuck and forced on Never Never Land that the, the thought of going into the outside world terrifies you. It scares you. So I'm going to re reference a lot of Jordan Peterson and a lot of Dave Ramsey right now. Okay, guys? Dave Ramsey is the man. He's going to help me. He's going to help me get my finances together, y'all. Um, and, of course, let's also give some homage and respect that in some cultures, it is normal for their kids last adults to live with them until they get married. But, oh, God, I felt a little bit of... My stomach just left because it's like, what if I never get married? You know, <laughs> so I'm going to live in my parents' house until forever. <laughs> but I guess we can't look at it that way. So um, so when I'm talking about this, I guess I'm talking about, I'm not referring to those cultures. I'm referring to another culture. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you're like me and you have, you dream big, you dream huge, and you all you want is, understanding from from your parents from your family and you <laughs> it's so funny because like I've been doing theater and blogging for such a long time and my my family is always so surprised that I'm still doing it and it's like yeah this isn't a hobby though like this is something I take very seriously and I wish that you would take it seriously with me but we may want our parents approval but we do not need it to win. We do not need our in, we don't need anyone in our life's approval in order to be successful. Okay? So don't use that as an excuse of, well, my parents don't believe in me, my friends don't believe in me, my, my boyfriend doesn't believe in me. That's a problem. First of all, fix your circle. But other than that, the only person who needs to believe in you is yourself and your investors. <laughs> okay, okay. Um 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 oh, also Another place of empathy to look at with our parents is no one wants to be labeled a bad parent, even though they do exist. <laughs> I, no one wants to be labeled a bad parent. And they also do want the best for us. You know, the thought of seeing, I mean, I don't have any kids, so, but the thought of picturing your child struggling, the, the thought of picturing your child homeless hurts them. You know, it's like <laughs> for some parents, it's like watching your kid trying to walk and they fall and fall and fall. And it's like, OK, it's OK, sweetie. It's OK, little Timmy. You don't have to walk today. We can put off walking for tomorrow. But that's not good. That's not healthy because then like they they don't know what it's like to fail. And I think it's important to teach your your child the importance of failing and allowing them to get back up on their feet by themselves, though, by themselves. And I don't know, maybe I'll be a shitty parent, but that's just the way I, <laughs> that's just the way I see it. You know, like at some point, oh, I, I said this once to a friend of mine. I was like, at some point you need to stop running back home to your parents for help. Cause that's not, that's not their job anymore. It's not fair to them. It's like we're taking advantage of them. We're using them. You know, they, they, they did the, everyone is doing the best that they can. Brene Brown. They did the best that they could with the limited amount of resources they had to raise us for 18 years. Some of them did a good, pretty decent job. Some of them did pretty shitty. Okay, cool. Talk to your therapist about it. How are we going to begin again? How are we going to do better? Okay? Are you willing, like I was saying earlier, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm rebuttaling right now. I'm really good at sales, y'all. <laughs> Are you willing to live below your means in order to finally grow up and be an adult? And let me go back to my notes. I think a lot of people use that excuse of, oh yeah, I'm just going to live back with, with my parents for a couple of years and just save some money. What are you saving your money for? What are you trying to spend money on? Are you actually saving your money? Are you actually putting your money towards good use? Or are you just going out there partying all the time? Hmm? You have to be completely honest with yourself. What exactly are you trying to save money for? What exactly are you doing with your time? Cool, cool. Um, 
And also, like, what is your intent? Why are you living with your parents? You know, had, had, had a bad breakup, had a bad divorce, you know, just lost your job. That happens. That's situational. That's, you know, it's a snowflake situation. But then how are we going to be give again, begin again? Oh, I was looking at this video. Oh, he got me so pissed off. I was looking at this video. This 30-year-old grown-ass man was suing his parents because they're kicking him out the house. Talk about fucking entitled. This money that you're using to go to the courts, to, to spend money on a lawyer, you could be using that to look for a new fucking place. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there is no shame with living with roommates. You know, there's no shame in living in a, in a tiny little hole of apartment. That's temporary. You know? What are you doing with your spare time? You may have one job. How many hours are you working at that job? Okay, when, when you have off time, what are you doing? Maybe it's a good idea to find a second job. Maybe it's a good idea to find a side hustle, selling things, re, re, buying things and reselling them online. That's completely legal right now. Do that. Find other ways of income in order for you to get out your house. Find a hobby to, in order to be useful. You know, there are so many ways to make money right now. So, and maybe you're thinking, well, I need at least... $5,000. Okay, you're not going to get that all in one day. I wish. And if you do, someone please let me know. You're not going to get that all in one day. So try to find other little things to do in order to get that 5000 Okay? It's totally possible. And also don't beat yourself up. Do not, oh my God, that first three months of me living back, back at home and still even now, it's like so much shame. So much shame being like I'm 30 years old living in my mom's house. But remind yourself, it's only temporary. Be thankful. Be grateful that you do have shelter because that is a Maslow hierarchy of need. Be grateful that you do have shelter. But like I said, how are we going to begin again? Uh, one of my um my podcast friends, um, she said to me the other the other night, once you go down, you got to come back up. So you so. Don't look at your situation as like, oh, woe is me, because I'm sure like we all want to throw that pity party. Everyone's invited. But don't look at it like that. Look at it as a bow and arrow. You got to draw back up, but you're going to shoot forward. OK, cool, cool. Um, um, OK, yeah, yeah. Another thing. Um, are you leeching off of your parents? Are you, are you using them? Do you have any motivation at all? And I think like I was saying, some of our parents coddle us to the point where it's like, I don't need motivation. They, I could live here forever as long as I want to, you know? Um, do you not want to pay bills? Yeah. <laughs> I know that um, I've been budgeting and I'm like, sorry, my mom doesn't keep the AC on. Um, but um, <laughs> I've been budgeting and I was like, oh, I want to go shopping. I want to get this. I want to get this. But I'm like, when I do find my own place, that money that I want to spend on shopping, that money is a light bill. That money is an internet bill. You know, that money is, I need to get my laptop fixed, you know? So don't, I can't live like I'm not going to be spending money on bills eventually. Cool, cool. Um, um, um. Ooh, the quote that Dave Ramsey said that I was like, ooh, that's, that's, yes. An eagle that never leaves a nest is a turkey. So don't be a turkey. Be an eagle and learn to fly on your own. Be grateful. Oh, oh, okay. So, and, and now advice for your parents. So there's a difference between a safety net and a hammock. Be the solution, but don't coddle them. They have to do things for their own. And this is something that I'm still trying to work on my boundaries with my mom right now. But <laughs> my mom cooks breakfast and dinner every day, right? I don't eat it. I know what you're thinking, spoiled, entitled. But here's the thing, though. How is that teaching me how to be, how to adult myself? Right. For me, if I'm going to if I'm going to eat, it's my job to feed myself. It's not her job. Right. If I if I and this oh this is something that that was pissing me off in the beginning. But um, I would get groceries right for myself, you know, and um, I put them in the fridge and then like I'm, I'm a bird eater. I, I also do intermittent fasting. So it would like last me like a week. But my mom would throw the food away. And I was like. Please stop doing that. I legit had to tell her like 10 times. I had to get someone else involved to be like, can you tell her, because apparently she's not listening to me, to not throw away, throw away my food. I will throw away my food when I'm done eating it. 
Um, make sure that you're not, like I said, make sure that you're not babying them. If they want to eat, it's their job to cook. It's their job to provide their own groceries. If um, don't do their laundry for them, don't fold their laundry. This is another thing I'm trying to work on with my mom for boundaries. Because <laughs> I, I try to tell her, mom, you are enabling me when you do things for me. It's my job to make my bed. It's my job to fold my laundry. If, I, if you do it for me, what is that teaching me? You know? Um... So yeah, don't be an enabler. Let them do stuff on their own, you know? I mean, obviously, like I said, guys, cir circumstantial. Like, if you broke your leg, obviously, you know, like, you might need some help, you know? <laughs> but if you're, like, if you're cool, there's nothing physically wrong with you, then why aren't you doing things on your own? Are you just sitting in bed all day sleeping? That's not useful. That's not productive with your or their time. And it also, I don't know, <laughs> I would be extremely offended if my child came to live with me and they're not doing shit, they're not being productive at all. All they do is sleep in bed all day. Maybe they, they ugh, I would just be pissed off and maybe I'd be offended because I'd be like, I did not raise you to be like this. Who are you? Who have you become? You know, I don't know. I would be. I would be. I mean, everyone goes through hard times. Everyone goes through dark times. Like I was saying, like, I didn't make my bed for four months. <laughs> but, you know, you got to crawl before you learn how to walk. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, how much time are you going to give it? For me, it is July 2020 right now. I'm giving myself until September to move out. I know that what you're thinking, that's a very short amount of time. But I've been here since, since March. And he was here with me until May. So... Yeah, it's time. Oh, and I also didn't have a job for like a couple of months too. But it's time for me to go. And I'm excited. I may not look like it right now. <laughs> but. I think that a lot of some people are like, oh, I have to move back in home with my parents because I have to take care of them. Which I think is sweet. It's nice, but you don't have to, be, you don't have to live with them to take care of them. You can have your own space and come back home and help them out. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially if you're in an environment where you aren't feeling mentally well. Because like I said, we grew, up, we grew up with two very, very extremely different generations. My family is extremely old school, y'all. Super old school. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the free thinker. I'm the black sheep. You know, I, I see things extremely differently. And I said this before, it's okay to love people from a distance, you know? I want my own space and, and I'll, I'll come back home more often for holidays. I'll come, I'll do drop-ins more often because I hardly ever did it when I lived on my own. But I'm it's, being here every day reminds me of why I left and why I chose to stay away. We'll go deeper on and that and another episode of The Breakup Diaries. That was so cheesy. I didn't like that. I'm not going to edit that out, though. Thanks so much for you guys for watching. Um, be patient with yourself, but still work your freaking butt off, okay? Do you guys like my journal? Got consent? Talk about it. Oh, bye. <laughs>